Hi everyone, Cody here. Welcome to another sci exciting science video. Today I'll be making batteries. Lead acid batteries, like the type that you have in your car. Now I won't be making the ones that you actually have in your car. I have those right here. Uh, I will be showing you how they work, of course. Um, I've torn apart batteries in the past and I, I still do occasionally, but it's really messy. And uh, I prefer to do it only when I have to, like when uh, building a battery for a very old car or engine or something. This is what makes batteries work. You have lead plates. Now, lead plates on their own wouldn't be very effective because they don't have very much surface area. And so what they do is they make lead plates with like this lead powder. It, it's, it's essentially a spongy lead. It's like lead powder with a fiberglass that's been thoroughly mixed in with it, and uh, that is an incredibly high surface area. So this is the negative plate here on the inside of a car battery. The positive plates I've been stacking over in here, they're, they're usually surrounded by rubber or fiberglass just to keep them separated from the negative plates. Let's see if I can find one that I haven't tore apart yet. See, this is one that has been uh, used and corroded, and uh, the, the positive plate usually like crumbles away, and that's what causes the batteries to go bad. You see, this is actually the remains of a positive plate that used to be co coated in fiberglass, and then in here you see the red, this is the lead oxide. This is the oxide that forms at the positive plate. You can kind of see the remains of the lead wire in there, but it's been completely corroded. And, uh, what I do is I, I take this out, all these lead plates, and uh, I'll save this red oxide, and I'll use this to paste the uh, plates here. You can see these? I'll take that and I'll mix it with a little bit of sulfuric acid and I'll like make it into a paste and I'll press it back into these. Uh, these used to be negative plates that I've uh, knocked the uh, powder off of. <laughs> you can see it's a very messy process and I try to avoid doing it. But, uh, yep. It, that just, uh, you do that just so you can store more power. Because the higher the surface area, the more electricity you can store and the faster you can discharge it. But uh, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm just going to be making a simple one so you can see the... Uh, see what goes on behind it. My glove's ripped. Damn. But uh, I'll just be making a simple battery so you can see how they work. And if you want to build one of your own, I will not stop you. I won't tell you everything because they, they do get complicated. I'll just uh, I'll just get you started. So let's uh, go ahead and start on a little jam jar battery. On this table I have everything I need to build a lead acid battery. See my jam jars? I have uh, the lead, which I'll be using recycled lead from a previous battery that I've tore apart. Let's see. That was a golf cart battery. And uh, for the acid, I have here some sulfuric acid, but I actually, I don't think I'll be using this actually. Like in my experimentation, I found that anything with a sulfate, like say uh, magnesium sulfate or uh, ammonium sulfate here, fertilizer, anything with the sulfate ions will work for the batteries. In fact, I really can't tell a difference. They work just as well. Um, this one is cheaper for me at least, because uh, you know I can just buy this in bulk from the uh, IFA. See there? Uh, I think originally batteries were made with uh, sulfuric acid because sulfuric acid is actually cheaper. It, it is cheaper to produce. It's a, it's a byproduct from mining operations. But uh, for the average homeowner, the average person, the cost of shipping and stuff will make it so that it's just It'll make this just absurdly expensive to buy in low quantities. And so I'd say go with the Epsom salt or the ammonium sulfate. Uh, I'll be explaining the chemistry more later. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you're putting together a battery is figure out what voltage you need. Each uh, cell of a lead acid battery produces about 2.2 volts. A cell would basically be one jar. So if I wanted to build a 12 volt battery, I would get six jars. This, uh, this six volt battery here, this six volt golf cart battery, it had three cells. See? The cells consist of two metal plates. I'll get into that later. But uh, you're going to need a way to charge your battery, which is actually a higher voltage than the voltage that your battery is going to produce. This is a 12 volt solar panel, but it's just called a 12 volt solar panel because it can charge 12 volt batteries. I've actually got it set up so it produces more like 14 volts. Because you've always got to have a higher voltage than the battery in order for the battery to get charged. Okay, uh, this is a solar panel I've put together myself actually. Not very good quality, but it certainly works. This is really what I use to charge the batteries, although if it gets cloudy again, looks like we're good for now, but if it gets cloudy again, I've uh, put these jars inside of a soap box so I can carry them and I can carry them over to a battery charger if I need to. Let's go ahead and make the uh, lead plates that we're going to be putting in these. Again, I'll be using this recycled lead, so uh, I'll show you how I'm making those. Okay, so here's my lead. You see it's all clean. 
I've actually melted this down all in one big pot and then I just ladled it onto a steel plate. That got rid of all the uh, impurities and stuff so that'll make it flow a lot better when I melt it down again. For the uh, second melting I'm just going to use a torch in a tin can because I don't plan on melting a whole bunch at a time. Now, a blowtorch doesn't get hot enough to uh, vaporize lead but if you were to try to melt uh, this kind of stuff with the ugly coating on it then you could get like sharp edges that the torch could heat up hot enough to melt to vaporize lead and uh, that's a good way to lead yourself. Also, uh, battery lead, if you have ever heated it with a torch like that, you'll notice that you might get a smell of garlic coming off of it. Yeah, that's arsenic. They add arsenic to it to improve its uh, flow capabilities. So, uh, just another thing to be wary of. I should be fine out in the open air. You know, but, uh, let's go ahead and melt it. And you can see on this uh, can, already right there, see? Get the light behind it. There's a little hole. So I'll melt some lead in here, and then pour it out through that hole. That'll get me some nice little strips of lead to use in those jars. Okay, so here's the lead sheets that I made. See, they're incredibly thin, and they have a rough texture. That'll help uh, give them lots and lots of surface area for the reactions to occur on. So I've taken them, and I've kind of folded them up inside of this jar. So you kind of uh, get as much of them in there as I can. Now, as long as they're not touching, you should be fine. As long as there's no metal-metal contact, you won't have any uh, shorting out. But if you're worried about it, you can stick in a piece of uh, fiberglass batting and the fiberglass will allow the uh, electrolyte to transfer current but it won't uh, it'll keep the plates apart and keep them shorting out this is what they do in car batteries but it's mainly because of the, the incredible close proximity of the car batteries plates you don't want the pastes to be uh, shorting themselves out but basically now if I put some uh, electrolyte in this I'll have a finished battery cell okay I have here a bucket of rainwater Use rainwater because uh, tap water will contain uh, dissolved salts, mainly calcium, which uh, could uh, disrupt the uh, battery. What you, the reason you use rainwater in batteries or distilled water is because uh, they use water, and so if you keep adding uh, new water to them, eventually the salts could build up. I don't think with this setup I would even notice, but it's always a good practice. Anyway, let's go ahead and add some uh, salt. I'm going to add this to it. So here it is. Now the actual quantity of sulfate that you use doesn't really matter. I'm sure you could look it up and figure out what they use in batteries. I think it's like 10% sulfuric acid. So if you want to get it close to that, I'm sure that is like an ideal level. But, but really all it is is the concentration is going to affect your reaction rate. So as long as it's in there, it's good. I'm just going to go ahead and dump this in and stir it up. Use this as my electrolyte. Hmm, kind of cloudy. So there's all the jars ready to go. They've all got metal plates and I decided to go ahead and put the batting in all of them just to make sure they don't short out. Sides here. Very nice. Alright, so before I put the electrolyte in I'm going to go ahead and cook up these uh, terminals on each plate because the plates are going to go like this is the end plate I'm going to make it and then these two need to be hooked together. These two are hooked together. These two are hooked together and so on. So I'm just going to chain them all together. So I just uh, soldered them all together now I'm doing a quick check to make sure all of the uh, cells are uh, not shorting out. See if I put it on the same one, that's shorted, but that's, that's supposed to be. I think this one's supposed to be separate from that. I think we're good. Ready for the electrolyte. Uh, here we are, the electrolyte's in place. <laughs> they really look like jam jars, don't they? You know, the pink styrofoam or fiberglass insulation really makes it colorful. But yeah, it should work. So I haven't started charging it yet. Um, you can see the uh, metal is starting to turn like a kind of a darker, it's kind of like bluing when the uh, electrolyte touched it. Uh, that'll come up later on when I'm describing the chemistry of this. Let's go ahead and put this on ohms. Okay, let's see what uh, kind of uh, ohms we got here. Hook it to each end of this battery and we're about 26 ohms. So that's a uh, fairly high resistance, but uh, not in the mega ohm range at least. You see, what uh, determines the power of a battery, how much amperage you can pull from it, is the internal resistance of the battery. If the resistance is high, you'll get low amperage. If it's low, you'll get a high amperage. You know, delta V equals I times R, whereas the, the voltage equals the resistance times the current. You know, work that equation around. Anyway, uh, the things that uh, change the uh, current, the resistance, are the surface area, so the more surface area I have in contact with the solution, the proximity that I have it, and the concentration of the solution. I suspect this uh, resistance will drop significantly over the next uh, little while 
as I'm uh, as I charge it and discharge it and I'll, I'll explain that later. Okay, so I've just hooked up the solar panel. See the wires here? Let you go up and into this. I've got them hooked into these uh, lead sheets. And uh, there is current flow, so we're good on that. Uh, I haven't seen anything happening yet. Oh, actually, yes, I have. You can see some bubbles there. Or maybe you can see some bubbles. I don't know how well the camera's picking it up. But, yep, those are bubbles of hydrogen. And those should be happening at the negative electrode, I believe. Yeah, there you go. It's starting to charge now. And uh, this uh, side over here, which is now the positive electrode, you can see the positive one, is uh, now starting to turn slightly brown, or maybe red. It's starting to get slightly red. And that's the lead oxide being formed at it. So I'm going to continue letting this charge for a little while. Unfortunately, it's starting to get a little cloudy. But uh, the solar panel should charge it just fine. But uh, I may have to take this over to the uh, generator later on to just charge it up faster. Looks like it's working very nicely. Hopefully I don't have any shorts develop. Good. Yep. As long as each of them are bubbling, I can be pretty sure that it's not shorted out. Yeah. Alright, so let's go ahead and let this charge for a few minutes. That's more like it. Now you can see the bubbling. See, I went ahead and I hooked it up to 30 volts to charge it. Comes off there. Uh, now, of course, if you remember that uh, delta V equals I times R equation, the, uh, the higher your voltage, the better it'll charge. So the faster it'll charge, or the more current you'll use. Now, this is very inefficient because we're producing a lot of hydrogen. At least it won't take me all day to charge it up. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to let this charge for just a bit while I go look for a light bulb. Again, sorry for the generator, but uh, if it wasn't running, I wouldn't be charging this like this. So, uh, I found me a light bulb, and it's a nice little one-hand feature kind of thing. So let's go ahead and hook it up to the extra... So I got it hooked up there. Let's go touch it there. See, it lights up. Very nice. But of course, that's with the uh, 30 volts hooked up to it, so let's go ahead and unhook that. There you go. That's unhooked. Now I should... Yeah, you got a little bit of current. You got a little bit of light. Excellent. Let's see how long it'll keep it lit. Probably quite a while because it's a very small bulb. But... Let's see. Let's watch it. That's actually keeping it charged for a long time, isn't it? Sure dim, though. Keep it on there. It's definitely getting dimmer. Yeah, it's it's basically gone now. So uh, so I don't have really the capability of storing very much. Let's go ahead and charge it up one more time. Let's get her going again. Okay, there you go. Very nice. Let's, uh, well, this is charging up again. Let's go ahead and do some things to it, like, for instance, uh, check, its, check the uh, amount of voltage I'm getting for each cell. My guess is it'll be about two, two volts or so. Okay. Now that's charged up. Let's go ahead and get this voltmeter out. I stick it between two points here, just like that. Now I'm getting a voltage. It's about two volts. But you notice it's dropping quickly. That's because it's, uh, it's discharging a little bit through the uh, solution. Not much you can do about that, except for maybe uh, charge a little lot more. See, what's happening to produce the current is uh, your uh, lead oxide, you can see there. So the positive plate has lead oxide on it. That is formed when the electricity occurs. And uh, basically the hydrogen is forming over here and the oxide is like going into the lead here. Kind of cool, yeah? Well, on the, uh, the negative electrode, it's actually metallic lead that is being deposited. But now, as it's discharging, this metallic lead, and the oxide actually, is turning into lead sulfate. That's uh, transferring uh, electrons around. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head what the exact chemical reaction is. I'm sure you could go look it up. But uh, the electrons from the oxygen and the electrons from the sulfate, they have to transfer, and that creates an electric current. It's not quite the same as your other, uh, like, lemon batteries, but it's very cool nonetheless. 
Okay, so now that I've got the oxide here and the battery's all charged up, it's probably slowly losing power as we speak. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this and I'm going to switch the wires and I'm going to charge it backwards. Okay, my Camry battery's going dead, so I wasn't able to capture that. But when I switched the electric uh, current, it like took a little while before it started bubbling again. And you notice it switched the uh, thing that it's bubbling on. And uh, now what's going on is that lead oxide is being turned back into lead metal, and lead oxide being formed on the other side. So I switched the electrodes, and you know what that's doing? Causing the lead plates to break down and then turn into a spongy, soft lead, which has an incredibly high surface area. Remember what I was saying about surface area is the more surface area you have, the better the battery. So the more times I do that, the more current I'll be able to store, and the faster I'll be able to get the current out. Let this charge for a while like that, and then we'll try the, the light again. See how much longer it lasts. You can see that's already turning gray. See? Very nice. All right, now I believe we are thoroughly charged in the reverse direction again. You can see, yep, that's definitely turned red-brown on that side. You can see it's still red at the top, but if I pull it up, you can see it's definitely gray there. So let's go ahead and unhook it. Okay, we're unhooked. So now it stopped bubbling. Let's go see what uh, voltage the battery is producing. So this is now the negative, so let's hook those together. So those are hooked together. I'm getting 10 volts dropping quickly because the battery's still not holding very much current. And I should be able to still light this light. Yeah, see the light still lights because I am generating current. Let's let this go for a little while. Then this, uh, this voltage should drop drastically. Yeah, it's because it's not very able to hold very much power still. That's still not very much surface area on those. In fact, let's uh, go ahead and uh, short it out completely. How about with a wrench? Just set that wrench on there. Okay. Discharge all that current. Okay. Now let's see if I can uh, get this light to light. <laughs> not at all. Oh, maybe a little. Yeah, it's making it glow. So it's still got a little bit of power still. It can't discharge immediately. And now the current I'm getting is like 4 volts. Yeah. So let's go ahead and charge it back up. Yeah, no. It's charging back up. Oh, shoot. I was going to I was going to do something. I wanted to hard discharge it. Yeah, let's go ahead and keep doing that. All right, what I wanted to do was uh, check the resistance of the circuit now. So let's put that to ohms. Okay. Now, what are my ohms? Look at that. I got 13 ohms. So basically I've cut my resistance in half just by switching the current once. Let's do that a couple more times, and then I'll show you what the resistance is then. See, this is the third time I've switched it here. I've got a lot of current stored up. Watch what happens when I hook it up. This is uh, hooking up backwards. See all that arcing? Then it stops. Uh, you may notice that if you ever hooked up jumper cables backwards is because you're, you're basically multiplying the uh, voltage differences. So you're basically getting twice the current. <laughs> okay, so we're charging backwards again. Okay, see how this one in there is all uh, red? Now watch what happens when I switch the current. Alright, it switched. Got a lot lighter, didn't it? And also, the bubbles are starting to form on it. Very nice. See, the uh, lead oxide turned into lead metal. Alright, this is going to have to be the last time since my camera is starting to run dead. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and unhook it. Let's unhook both of them. Okay. So, uh, you can see it splatters stuff all over because I'm charging it hard. Let's see, it, uh, it'll light my light. Very nice. Yep. Let's see what voltage I'm maintaining. 
we go. Keep in mind this is after switching the current six times. So, hold on. I'm having trouble getting it on there. There we go. Yeah, it's like 10 volts still. Let's go ahead and uh, hook this. Uh, I got a light bulb here. Let's hook this onto it, see what it does. There we go. There we go. A little bit of a glow. Yeah. Oh, I think I think I'm dead. I think I ran my battery dead. <laughs> At least too dead to run that light. I think this uh, smaller light will probably run. That, that's like the light of a car, though. Yeah, the smaller one will still run. All right. So now that we've pretty much got her discharged again, let's go ahead and finish it off with the wrench. Okay. See, the, the salt was causing me to have a hard time getting connection earlier. Let's go ahead and check for ohms now. This is after six times charging back and forth. Let's just uh, check that where it doesn't have salt. Alright, my camera's definitely dying now. I don't know how much I've filmed there. So this is me hooking the, uh, the ohm meter up. I've got a good connection now. I'm getting 7.2 ohms. So that's uh, significantly better than what we started with, but really we got a lot left to go. If I wanted these to be like an actual good battery, I'd have to set it on like a timer and charge them, uh, like switch the current every 10 minutes for an entire day or more. But uh, I'm not going to do that. I think you guys got the idea. So uh, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. My camera's going to die, so see you next time. <laughs>